So I'd like to welcome Kevin to the show, who's used TensorFlow.js with a product named HarperDB. Now, before we learn more about that, please do introduce yourself and tell us more about who you are. Hi, Jason. Thank you for inviting me on the show. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm an engineer with HarperDB. I've been using TensorFlow for about four years now, um, mostly in Python originally, and then moved over to TensorFlow.js. Uh, built a few apps with it, uh, including one that was a bird sound identifier, uh, which worked really well with TensorFlow.js because it could package in seamlessly to the rest of the code base and uh, deploy across platforms. Uh, for the past year, I've been working with HarperDB uh, to deploy machine learning models onto their ecosystem and to build uh, POCs for clients, uh, mostly based around recommendation systems. Very cool. Thank you so much for being on the show. And first off, what exactly is HarperDB and how does it use machine learning? So HarperDB is a database package that runs on Node.js. Uh, we have uh, clustering capabilities. So you can have multiple nodes and control table level uh, replication between those nodes. Uh, so you can control which data flows from one node to the other, and you can store virtually any type of data on uh, these tables, uh, ranging from binary files with model weights uh, to images or arrays of user interactions. Uh, we also have a custom function server that runs alongside the database uh, to where developers can code uh, custom endpoints and control the shape of the data either on the way in or on the way out. Uh, so we've been using TensorFlow to build models and run on those custom function endpoints. And then we've been using TensorFlow.js uh, specifically that way we can code in one database node and have it automatically replicate to child nodes uh, to run closer to the edge and uh, closer to the end user. Wow, that sounds pretty awesome. I, I think at this point, it's probably time for a demo to see this in action. Uh, what can you show us? Uh, so today we have a POC that we built for a grocery store. Uh, it's a recommendation system that is on a hub and spoke topology. Uh, mm -hmm. to where we have six different nodes. Uh, there's a central node that we will use to deploy the model to, and then it will automatically go back down to the five child nodes, the five spoke nodes, uh, whenever we add that model to the table. A quick question at this point, what exactly is a node? So a node is just a, an instance of the database uh, that see. is clustered with the other uh, nodes, and you can control the per table uh, how the information is moved from one uh, node to the other node, like on a okay. hub-sub type uh, functionality. Very cool. OK, let's continue. And you can see here we have the TFJS dashboard. That'll be our central node that we'll see uh, for this UI in just a moment. And then we have nodes one through five, which are the spoke nodes uh, that would be running at the grocery store, mm -hmm. where they're going to pull down the model and then retrain it on local data. OK, very cool. So here we're looking at uh, our data viewer. This is just a example of the data that we're using to train this model. Uh, this is from a grocery store data set from 2014, 2015. Uh, and here we have items that were purchased by user by date. So we aggregated them all up into excursions. Then we separated that out into uh, five different sections for each of the five nodes in this example. And the way that we're creating the training data from it is we are grabbing four items at random, using mm -hmm. three of those items as the feature, and then one item as the label. I see. OK, so you get to learn what is associated with other products, essentially. <laughs> Exactly, uh, yeah. for a collaborative-based uh, recommendation system. So looking at three items that one user purchased uh, to find the fourth item as their label. So if you have three items in your cart, uh, we're using that as your features and going to map that back up to that user uh, to recommend that fourth. Very and cool. This, yeah. So this is our, our model uh, control panel, essentially, to where we can create additional models, um, rename it or duplicate it, train it, and deploy it back out to those child nodes. Uh, and uh -huh. we have this small coding window here uh, to where you can actually create the model. And this is just a simple example of a uh, embedding model um, to where we have yeah an embedding layer, and then that goes down into some dense layers, and then back out through just uh, one softmax layer. OK, and a quick question at this point. I noticed that um, this is in JavaScript. Is this JavaScript or Node.js in the back end? So right now, we're running in the browser on JavaScript. And then when okay. it gets deployed and it runs uh, on the nodes in production, that's on Node.js. OK, very cool. So basically utilizing both environments. <laughs> very nice. Both environments. TensorFlow.js is uh, quite versatile. Very cool. OK, next up. So this is uh, production monitoring. So this is after we have trained that model on the central node, and it's deployed back down to the, the spoke, the child nodes, uh, and then it's running production. So they're saving their own production metrics, and that gets published back to the central node. Uh, and we can see it here. So for example, the items that the user has already purchased or already has in their cart, the item that we recommend and whether or not they actually purchase that item. Nice. I like this kind of real-time nature of it all. That's very, very cool. <laughs> it's very nice. It's an evolving process, right? Like you need that pipeline to be smooth and efficient so that way you can keep uh, learning from your model and train it to work better. 
lovely i'm gonna have to try this out next time i go to the supermarket i think <laughs> this is for an idea of uh pretty much you have a tablet that you can attach to a shopping cart that's taking images of what's in the shopping cart so we get the uh the items that you've already put in there and they're recommending an additional one uh, we named very it don't cool yes yeah. So, yeah. yeah you don't forget in fact maybe that's a good challenge for any of our viewers if they want to make that component of it <laughs> they can do the object recognition and then talk to your back end to get a recommendation uh, if anyone's watching wants to do that put your answers in the comments so we're just showing here how we can uh use the the model control panel to duplicate a model and rename it um so you can keep different versions of it and deploy it back out and just showing uh the changes that we would make uh, for example, adding additional units to a dense layer, uh, then training it, and we can again see the the metrics uh, per batch uh, coming through on that graph. I see. Yeah, and I see you're using a multi-layer perceptron here, essentially, to do all of this. So the bread and butter of machine learning. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Trying to keep it simple to show the uh, the potential of uh, what you can do with this. Yeah. And of course, you know, if users have other models they want to use, they could potentially use anything in their system and use their own training data and so on and so forth too, right? Certainly. This is just, uh, it's more so to show the, the DevOps side of it, of how you can train a model and deploy it to multiple nodes. Um, and that model being whatever you wanted to train with, model being whatever you wanted to create, and uh, the data set being whatever you wanted to train with. So this could work on any type of model um, on any data set, but this is how you can train it in one location and deploy it out to the edge and get those metrics back uh, really quickly. So yes, I really love how you can use this as part of your ML stack. And I'm curious why you chose TensorFlow.js for part of this solution. Well, we've built other recommendation systems uh, with TensorFlow on Python using the, uh, the TensorFlow recommenders library, uh, which definitely has some power whenever you're dealing with large data sets. Um, but HarperDB runs on Node.js, and so it's very advantageous to have another system that also runs on Node.js. So yeah. you're not having to train it with another script and convert it back over, then load it in. Uh, it cleans up that pipeline quite a bit uh, so we can iterate through it quicker. Yeah, that makes complete sense. We're starting to see a lot of companies actually, for the same reasons as yourself, do this. In fact, LinkedIn now uses for exactly the same reasons. We've got a Node.js backend. And of course, TensorFlow.js fits right into that stack very nicely versus other potential solutions. OK, very cool. And if people want to try this out for themselves, uh, how can they do so? So we have a link uh, at a GitHub repo for this custom function. Uh, you can create a free Harper DB instance and then deploy this custom function on there and uh, get up and going. Excellent. And of course, we'll put the links in the description after the show, so look out for those. And I guess, what are your future plans with this? Do you have any new ideas in mind? Uh, so we are still, this is a um, collaborative-based method. Uh, it would be nice to expand it out to a content-based where we have more information on the individual items and we can grab features back out and recommend uh, other items based on the features of the items that have been selected. Uh, so expanding out there and also expanding the dashboard to include additional metrics uh, and even the ability to scale other nodes from that dashboard. Mm -hmm, very cool. Um, so I look forward to seeing that. And for our viewers watching, go try HarperDB right now with TensorFlow.js and let us know how you get on in the comments below. And of course, thank you, Kevin, for being on the show. Thank you, Jason. It's a pleasure to be here.